I'll win. This fool's running a Honda 2000. <laughs> this is my Fast and Furious Jetta, and I think it's pretty cool. But you know what would make it more cool? Neon. Last you've seen this car, we are finishing our series. We brought it to Helen, then we got it back. We show you the end before it was painted completely. So, first thing you might notice is the wheels are different because A, they match the paint much better and B, uh, I actually kind of like the style a little better too. The spoiler was previously unpainted on the black portion. This part was painted and needed a lot of help on the sides because it was really ugly. Uh, it came back still really ugly. Uh, this looks absolutely awful, so this spoiler is going to have to get completely redone. The black part uh, still looks awful too, so that's going to get redone as well. But it's also not painted underneath. So that's cool. Because why the f would you paint underneath in a spoiler? But from here, it looks amazing. You can also see the body kit is painted uh, in its entirety. All the spots that were flaked off were repainted. What's this? Okay, I like it, Picasso. Yeah, that way. The headlights, we got a boatload of comments about the headlights being crooked in the last video. Uh, they were fixed and they're not crooked anymore. They're only like a marginally crooked, but I fixed them. The car is finally back and we can have some fun with it, take it to events and do stuff like that. This weekend is the first event, but now we're gonna do neons because apparently more work is what we wanna do before we have fun. This is our neon kit that we got on Amazon and it comes with these items. And we're gonna show you what that looks like now. Most people have never installed neons on a car, actually neither have I, but I'm gonna show you how to do that. So you can see right here, we have it laid out. Here's the sides, here's the front, here's the back. You can see the way this is laid out. You have all of this one side on one wire, all of those on the other wire, and then they join in the front in the middle. Next, you have these connections where it joins at the front and it goes to this little module box and then these two wires, which you hook up to power. They've also included in this, this little switch that goes to a 12 volt cigarette lighter outlet. So if you really wanna install this in the trashiest way possible, so. Hope you got a switch with your neons. Now, I'm gonna power these just to make sure this stuff works. And our battery's in the back of our car because we relocated it on the red side and on the black side. And look at that. You can control the brightness. So if it's like putting out way too much light, you can just dull it down a little bit. That's actually kind of neat. Trying to imitate a police officer? With yeah, whoop, 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 like this. You just <laughs> flash like this, whoop, whoop. Whoa. <laughs> That is Seizure Central right there. <laughs> 80s arcade game, like bam, 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 bam. Oh, there's America right there. I'll tell you what, that's America right there. There you go, that's the police. That, that's gonna get you pulled over at night in a heartbeat. Now we're gonna move on to a DIY. This is something that I'm gonna go through very quickly. We're not gonna go super in depth. If you don't wanna watch it, DIY, skip to this time right here where we're gonna see the final results of this car with the neons and without. And we're gonna be going to a show that's local to us that Chad Lindberger, who played Jesse in the Fast and Furious, happens to be there. This car is gonna be in the show. I think he's signing autographs and stuff. I imagine this car will be near him. So the first thing I found you do is mock up kind of the length of the side. The side will allow you to then know the rest of the length that you're available for the front and the rear. They come with quite a bit of excess. Um, this car happens to be not very long, so this piece runs basically all the way from front to back. These kits all, to my knowledge, come with this double-sided adhesive on it. If you think you're going to just slap it to the bottom of your car, you're wrong. It's not gonna work. Unless you have a flat spot. So like newer Volkswagen Audis use a lot of like uh, plastic paneling underneath. If you had one of those, you could wipe it clean and stick it to that. It probably would get decent adhesion. This car just has underbody coating on it. There's nothing to stick to. There's absolutely nothing. It will fall off immediately. So it comes with these little brackets. They attach onto the ends like this and clasp it on. That way you get a good non falling off wire. Screws that they came with were just minuscule. And so the holes you have to drill in the body are also minuscule. Well, what I did is I snapped a drill bit just immediately. Uh, very first hole I was trying to drill because it was just too tiny of a hole. So I had to get oversized screws and go in there. They don't fit perfectly, but they are there and they are fitting and they're holding it. So 
Is it perfect? Not really, but is it gonna securely hold it for the lifetime of this vehicle? You're God right it is. So you line her up and... Well, that broke. What I found is you give it a little pre-start on your self-tapper. These are just what we have at the shop because they're belly pan screws for cars. So I'd rather go to the Home Depot and get some better stuff, but I'm not gonna do that. So I, yeah, I'm still using the tape or at least attempting to use the tape. I think relying on that would be a terrible mistake and it's almost for sure gonna be gone in a week or something like that. Okay. So as you're sticking, run it a little bit back behind the pinch weld and like we're running it basically along this. Here's, here's the outside of our car. Here's our pinch weld. Here's where we're putting the LED strips. Here is roughly where the middle is. And what I want, what I did at the middle on the other side is put another bracket here. And I think it's a better way to do this because the head of these screws are pretty big. I can use that to pinch this piece in. So I don't have to use those brackets. I'm just using the head of the screws to secure it. And the reason why I know it's good is because I tugged on it. I said, that's not going anywhere. A little testing, make sure that our, our work is done properly. So we're jumping into the battery, just so you know, there's a battery junction block here. If you haven't watched our Jetta series, you should have, you should have watched us build this car into an amazing machine. All right, so we're gonna run this rear one. This mounts in the rear of the car. We're gonna run this to the back. We have to make sure we avoid things like wheels because they spin, suspension components because they go up and down like this and articulate. So we're going around here. Uh, make sure you clear all your stuff. So this was a coat hanger, I uncoat hangered it. And we're gonna attempt to fit this over the gas tank, above our gas tank, into our wheel well. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So here's our coat hanger. I was able to get it over our gas tank. So I'm gonna tape this to it. We're feeding it through. All right, so just feed that guy up like this. We have our wire here. I looped it then through this little hook here just to kind of deal with the wiring. And then we are ready to mount it at the rear. Now, you can see I've already mounted the other side on the exhaust side, which we'll go over in a minute. Now, because of our mounting location, we're not no longer drilling holes and running screws in because they'll come up through the floorboard of our trunk. So we're using zippy zips to mount this. So I don't know why I have this in my hand because this is an impact for a Torx <laughs> and not a drill. Okay. So I'm gonna drill one hole right here. And then I'm gonna check it. Our hole is on the other side of our battery right here, which is perfecto. So we're going to down to drill another hole. I'm gonna take my zippy zip. I'm gonna stick it up. Same thing, we're gonna peel this one. Not all the way, just the end. Let's get it, set it in place for like that. The wire is wrong, bro. Huh? The wire is wrong. Oh, you are absolutely right. <laughs> JK, Nathan informed me I was a dumbass and he was right. Starting over here, where Nathan so rudely judged me. This zip tie is backwards. This is how good the tape holds, guys. You love it, you think it's great, you're just gonna stick it. You're just gonna stick it at home because you're like, this seems like way too much work. You're right, it is too much work. But you know what else is too much work? Having these things rip off your car at 60 miles an hour on the highway. That one you, that you installed earlier you got, is already falling off. You got LED lassos just ripping around on the highway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you can come up with a better way to mount it, good luck. You could mount it back here, but it would not go over the exhaust very well. You want to judge and be like, why didn't you put it on the back bumper? You could. It's going to look like complete dog shit. Easy and good are not the same thing. Yeah, that looks great. Thanks, Nathan. Also, I put the zip tie in backwards again. So, excess wire we got here. We're all finished up. All we got to do is make sure we don't let this just dangle like that. And we conveniently have these two holes in the body right there. And then I'm going to zip it right up. Yeah, that's not going anywhere. Let's go look at this other side. 
the wire then runs over this heat shield over here in between the heat shield and the gas tank and then pulls around here over this heat shield here and then is the excess is zip tied right here the reason why you have to do all that work is to make sure that you can actually get around and not melt your wires obviously you have your exhaust here we also have a rear valance that was repainted absolutely awfully uh that was supposed to be fixed at the body shop but that's what we got back so uh that's the world we're living in the alternative that you might think of is running it along here you could run it along here and then maybe kind of go up over the exhaust and then come back down i don't know it would probably melt in my opinion i don't think it's going to be a good long-term solution which is why i didn't run it there now on to our front now i am going to run this up we have to make sure you can clear all this clear all these suspension components axles all that stuff um we actually had a customer at the shop i felt very terrible i wanted to make a video about he had paid somebody to do neons on it. It was a homey hookup, kind of like our paint job. Uh, and uh, they had done this, where they ran it through the control arm, neon wires just sitting in his suspension, going up and down all day long. Find people you trust to work on your stuff. Now this is where I found this is kind of a difficult thing to figure out. We have no fender liners in our car right now. So I have come up with a solution for me. If you have fender liners, you could screw this maybe inside the fender liner you could like run it inside the fender liner and screw drill a hole maybe zip tie it to the fender liner so right now i'm just sticking this over the wheel and then we're going to mount the front part so we can get a better feel for how much slack we got now in arco we have happen to have a very convenient place to mount this because this car has a front end swap and this has a bar that runs across the front for an engine mount uh this is going to be varied by car you may end up mounting it to your bumper. Just remember, if you're drilling holes, there's radiators, there's cooling hoses, there's stuff. So be aware, don't just start running drills home. Don't mount it to things that require to be taken off when you change your oil. Look at how good that tape is sticking down there. I gotta get a zip tie just to keep this thing from falling off. See how good that tape works? You can take a look at our finished result here. That's all zip tied up. The adhesive held absolutely zero and it goes up here and then we have all this extra slack to hide inside of our fender to mount these wires you can remove your fender liners and put them above it or attach them to the fender liner themselves just be careful if you're doing that because you have a rotation we actually opted to mount them with gaff tape to the back side of the fender because we have a flat mounting service and this should hold and we can add our fender liners back later following that we tucked up all the excess wire and hit it and then zip tied it in place. If you did this correctly, you should have two of these guys dangling right here. And we're gonna plug these guys in like that, turn these, these are there to seal it from water. Cause if you didn't know, your car is gonna get some water in it. Now we're gonna tuck this box over here and I'm just gonna zip tie it up and out of the way. As far as I'm concerned, this thing is useless, but the wire that it has on there is not useless. So we're gonna throw that away and then we're gonna use these wires to lengthen this because this can't reach much of anything. And if you put this to your battery, don't do that, please. Please don't put this straight to your battery. First of all, the number one thing about some cheap neons you bought on Amazon that are surely not quality controlled at all is your car can catch on fire, <laughs> okay? And if they were to catch your car on fire and they're not fused and they're hooked directly to the battery, it will just go on fire until there's no more car left. If you had a fuse box under the hood like we have, you could run it under here, add a fuse, whatever. Uh, it's an option for us. If you don't have a fuse box under there, you're gonna run it inside the car, which is what we're gonna do now. Find a grommet in your firewall like this one. It's gonna look something like that. It's gonna have wires going through it and you're gonna have to push the wires through there to run it inside your car. Here it is. Hey. hey. This is our fuse panel that I pulled down from underneath our dashboard. The thing I would recommend for you, the average person to do, I'm pinning this into a wire that we've already run and all that jazz. There are like jumper fuses you can buy that you can allow you to wire into a fuse. That way you'll get a wired connection. It's easy to do and not do it in like a way where people like run a wire and they'll like twist it around and then jam it into the fuse hole. Don't do that. Now we wired ours to a fuse. Our system comes with an app that allows us to turn the system on and off to control the neons. 
If you didn't have that, you would add your switch just like this one. Really easy to turn your system on and off. And again, the black wire is going to be the ground in our system and then the red wire is going to be power. Key on. Would you just look at it? Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Now that our car looks the part, we're ready to head off to import Face Off, which is a car show we came out to. It's primarily a JDM event, but Chad Lindbergh, who played Jesse, was gonna be there signing autographs. And so we came out to show off our Jetta. Can I get inside? Yeah, yeah. feel free. Don't do it, Jesse. <laughs> All win. This fool's running a Honda 2000. <laughs> Since Jesse loves our car, we're gonna throw him the key so he can take it to a two-step contest. A two-step contest is essentially two cars that pull side by side, and the crowd decides which one is louder and more obnoxious. Why are we participating in this? I have no idea. Two-step contest in a car that doesn't two-step or rev above 4,000 RPM at idle. How about that? I hate it here. I hate it so much. <laughs> like someone getting shot in the movie? That's what it's That's up. Jesse getting shot. The enthusiasm for Chad at this event was a wild experience to behold. It's clear to me that the nostalgia for the original Fast and Furious cars and film are alive and well. Thank you so much for watching. We'll be bringing the Jetta to more events coming soon. Check out our socials for more details.